Okay, so this was round three. I'm paired against uh, another um, national master, Donald Johnson. I think is a junior, probably around 15 or, or 16. And uh, at this point, I'm on one and a half out of two. You know, I drew the last game, which is a little disappointing, but I felt like, okay, not a big deal. Drawing with black is, is a normal result. Um, and this game, I, uh, I got white again. So I go for d4, c4. And uh, my opponent goes for the Grunfeld. And I decide to go for this um, line with knight f3 and h3. I play this one against uh, international master Bryce Tiglon at one of the um, norm events I played a couple of months ago in April. Um, and uh, ended up winning a very, very nice game. I decided to use the same system here because why not? I feel like it's a, it's a good line against the, the Grunfeld. Um, so castles, bishop e2, takes, takes, knight c6, bishop e3. Um, yeah, David disapproves, I know, but he's really he's really behind on the on the times in terms of the openings. So unfortunately I'll have to take his disapprovement with a large grain of salt. Um so bishop b3, the idea is just to develop, get a strong center, have a nice position. Here black goes queen a5 check, bishop d2, queen a3. And this is actually the main main way for black to handle this position, this queen kind of sits on a3 and black puts pressure on d4. Um, but white is able to kind of wriggle out nicely. So d5, bishop takes a1, queen takes, this is just a very nice exchange sacrifice and uh, white can castle here, play bishop h6 at any point. Um, and uh, yeah, um, is doing great. Uh, so he goes knight e5 instead. This is the main move. Played rook to b1. And um, yeah, now black could take this pawn if they want, then white would castle. And it's one of those typical Grunfeld positions where um, sacrificing uh, a pawn on the queen side is white, but we get some nice center and um, get to play like bishop f4 at some point. And basically once these pawns start moving up, they're very, very strong. And white also has a lot of pressure against uh, the queen side, so it's kind of hard for black to um, to mobilize here. Uh, and white just gets a, a ton of nice compensation. So it's kind of a fun position to uh, to play. Um, queen d2, yeah, would be possible here as well, but then the end game I think is really nothing special for white. Black goes rig d8 and just immediately gets uh, a lot of play here, so it's important for white to try and keep the uh, keep the initiative with bishop d2. So d5, knight e5, rook b1. Um, this was all kind of in my notes, and and here black goes e6. So this move was a little bit surprising for me, and I don't I didn't remember looking at it when I was um, prepping the line. It's a natural move, but actually I feel like um, it's it might be quite a serious mistake. Uh, so I castle. And now if black were to, let's say, take, for example, and play queen takes a2, I was thinking I would go like bishop f4. And this is kind of the position white is aiming for in this line where, you know, we get something like this and the d pawn is very strong, white's pieces are super active, and yeah, I mean, it's just hard for black to uh, to coordinate here. I think white is doing really, really well. Um, so takes, takes, and... Uh, yeah, so there was never a chance actually to play um, to play bishop b4. If I played here, then there's knight takes f3 and uh, bishop c3 check. But yeah, kind of an important detail. Uh, and uh, after I castle, we'll hear black has time to um, to get out of it. So uh, takes, takes, and queen takes a2 is possible. In the game, black actually plays rook d8, and so we never have a chance to, to play this bishop b4. Um, but yeah, but that was an important point that there's uh, takes takes in, in this one. Otherwise, e6 would be a very serious blunder. Um, so rook d8, and uh, okay, putting pressure on the default. It's natural, but black actually doesn't really end up developing here. Um, so I spent some time here, I end up going bishop to g5. And yeah, I think this move just kind of refutes black's idea outright, because the rook doesn't really have a useful square here. 
Um, if rook e8 or something, then I can also throw in bishop b5, and white's pieces just start completely taking over. Um, and yeah, position just looks terrible for black. Let's say takes, um, maybe queen takes, maybe even just gf, and then rook f8 and d6. And yeah, a lot of times white just ends up winning a piece with this d-pawn, because it's very, very strong. Um, so yeah, I think already here black ends up losing the game with, with e6 and, and rook d8 essentially. Um, if uh, in this one, if bishop d7, then we have takes and takes, and this one ends up um, hanging. Um, among other things, this would also be good for white. So it takes, rook takes here and here. Uh, bishop takes a1, I covered a little bit a while ago. Um, but if takes takes, white just gets fantastic compensation here. Castles, bishop h6, and yeah, it's just huge, huge um, play for white. So, um, yeah, rook d8, bishop g5. My opponent took on f3, bishop takes f3, and he goes rook d7. Um, he didn't want to go rook e8, but actually it's pretty bad after d6. In fact, it's pretty much just immediately losing. It's bishop d7, we take here. And, uh, yeah, white's d pawn is just, just running through. Um, you know, here we can go rook c7 first, or... Yeah, maybe d7 as well. Um, so, yeah, rook d7, but now we're not even down a pawn, and the opponent's development is really, really messed up. So at this point, I feel like I'm, I'm probably just winning here with, with simple moves. So a lot of different options here for white. I think I considered queen c2, queen e2, queen d2. Uh, eventually, I decided to play this one. I'm just trying to develop my pieces. I even have a threat of like rook c1 and maybe even taking here at some point. Um, but uh, yeah, I felt like black is going to go queen c3, which he does. And now the end game I think is fantastic for white. Like takes, takes, rook c1, bishop g4 somewhere, and black is just way behind in development. But um, yeah, queen a4, uh, I liked a little bit more just to keep the queens on the board. I felt like this is a little bit more annoying for black. Now I have this like hidden threat to go rook c1, rook takes uh, c8 as well. And then the rook on d7 is lost. So queen d4, rook b4, queen e5, now bishop h4. And I just felt like I'm playing with a rook up, right? Like extra rook, extra piece. Um, just everything look, looked great for white. Uh, here black played e takes d5. I spent some time here considering bishop g4. Um, which looked very tempting, but I didn't really see the need for this. Let's say f5 takes h5, something like this. I drop back, queen takes f5, and then white is down a pawn. I mean, I'm, I was sure the position is completely winning for white anyway. There's just too many open lines around black's king, but I didn't really see the need. So ed5, ed5. Now rook e4 is a huge threat. Bishop g3 I won as well. Um, so black played f5 to stop rook e4. Bishop g3, queen f6, rook e1. Just beautiful position for white. Uh, rook d8 was played. Just hoping to finally develop. d6, bishop d7, queen b3 check, king h8, bishop b5. I mean, white had options, I think, on almost every move here, but I don't know. I felt like my play was, was pretty logical. Um, now I'm forcing a trade of dark square bishops, leaving black's king pretty weak. Now rook takes b7, and yeah, I feel like it's just a matter of time, uh, like one or two moves before black totally collapses. Um, so yeah, you went rook c8. I don't know. I wasn't really sure about any other moves for him. Uh, here I calculated a little bit, but ended up seeing until the end of the game, more or less, rook e7. Um, now I'm hitting this, hitting this. So rook c1 check, or queen a1 first he could have thrown in, doesn't really matter. Um, king h2, queen a1. I felt like he was going to do this anyway, like if queen a1 check, king h2. Bishop is hanging, h7 is hanging, so black really doesn't have um, any solid moves here. So check, king h2, queen a1, 
And uh, now okay, just took a little bit of calculation to see that there's not really a lot of threats for black on the king side. So I just played queen f7 here, started creating my own threats. And the game was just over. Rook h1, king g3, f4. I don't think there's even a way for white to go wrong here. I think every legal move is fine, but I looked for the safest. So king h4, g5, and uh, I played king h5 and, and the checks uh, ran out. Actually, king takes g5, I maybe should have played this one because on rook g8 check, I can go queen takes. <laughs> Finish the game kind of nicely like this. Um, but king h5 force resignation. So you could say that this was a more more efficient way to end the game as uh, yeah the checks all run out and of course we're just mating or, or picking up the bishop uh next of course bishop ye we have rook takes uh so yeah that was it um honestly a very smooth game i felt like it was pretty uh, you know flawless on my end and i don't really use that word lightly but i i really wouldn't wouldn't change a single one of my moves uh, if i could and uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of it was largely related to the opening. I, you know, I felt kind of bad, but we were analyzing this one afterwards. And, you know, my opponent was trying to like analyze where exactly things things went wrong. But it was really, uh, it was really just an opening thing. This one, one idea, e6 and rook d8 and why I was able to develop and, um, and uh, yeah, just get a, uh, you know, decisive advantage by move 17. Um, not so often you see that in, in the Grunfeld. So yeah, maybe this H3 line is uh, not so bad. <laughs>